Today's the day! You can finally DIY a Threadripper 5000, but Threadripper 5000 has actually been out for months and months and months and months and months. We at level one, we've broken some world records with our two, not one, but two Threadripper 5000 systems. It's, it's been out forever, but where are the benchmarks? Well, they exist, but man, this launch is weird. <laughs> I don't, I don't even, weird, yeah. This CPU is launching, but it's also been out already. Has been out all year, kinda. If you wanted this system, at least a system based around the Threadripper Pro 5000 series CPUs before July, 2022, you had to go with Lenovo. Lenovo has been shipping systems for many months now based around Threadripper Pro 5000, 5000 series CPU, 64, 13 core, 16 core. You want it, you bought it from Lenovo. Ah, but with the CPU they sell, it's locked to Lenovo only motherboards. That's a bit of a deal breaker for some. If you wanted a feature that Lenovo didn't offer, you were kind of stuck. As for the CPU itself, well, there's not been any surprises. And with this launch, that continues to be the case. There's, there's not really any surprises. Oh, it's really amazing and great, don't get me wrong. AMD is just a boring execution machine at this point. And yet, the CPU cements AMD's position in the workstation computer market. And it is, for all intents and purposes, completely and utterly unchallenged in the workstation market. This system was actually built by Puget Systems. Oh no! And the new Threadripper Pro 5000 CPU also drops right into existing WRX80 motherboards, such as our creator, WRX80. That's not what's in our Puget system. This is a Sage system. We've got two systems. We'll talk about that. But we're also, we've also been told that there's refresh WRX80 motherboards coming, so motherboards that didn't launch with Threadripper Pro 3000. Uh, so anyway, what we're launching today is just the bare CPU in the retail channel. You can build your own system with it. You can build your own system with whatever motherboards you want. But I ordered this system from Puget Systems over a month ago, their system integrator. And this came in well before today, well before August 8th, uh, well before this launch day, and uh, it's made of completely standard parts. The CPU isn't locked, it's got an ASUS Sage WRX80 motherboard, standard Noctua components, standard Noctua cooling. Uh, what? Yeah, I said this launch is weird, right? Okay, so my first Threadripper Pro 5000 system was totally this retail system from Puget. And it cost over $10,000. It is a monster fire-breathing machine. And I've done a separate video on this and the overall experience. And, and by the way, this system from Puget, it isn't for me. It's for one of the PhD gurus that hangs out on our forum. He just sort of... Let me borrow his credit card. Well, actually, we use my credit card, but I'm gonna be reimbursed for this, so it's fine. We're figuring out some software stuff, so I've gotta actually get this to him, whereas this system, based on the WRX80 creator from ASRock, is gonna be the more permanent level one installation. But anyway, the system that I built from the 32-core CPU that AMD sent me and this motherboard uh, performed a fair bit differently than the system from Puget, surprisingly. You see, Threadripper Pro is unlocked. You can overclock it but not every motherboard will actually let you overclock it much, if at all, uh, to run outside of AMD's advertised specs. So, launch cadence on this one. It's sort of weird. It's Lenovo, and then OEMs and other integrators like Puget, and then finally, a month later, today, DIY integrators. And it's also about $100 per core, plus $100 for the carrier. So, the math is easy. You want a 64-core CPU, it's going to cost you $64.99. You want a 32-core CPU, $32.99. 24-core, $24.99. See what's, see what's going on there? It's sort of weird, but that's what we've got today. $100 per core might seem steep. Meanwhile, the same Zen 3 cores and the 16-core 5950X, for example, is less than $50 per Zen 3 core. But... Eh. Game developers using Unreal Engine, open embedded developers, hardcore software developers, people doing DevOps workloads, creative types using the Adobe Suite. Everyone has been climbing the walls to buy systems built around Threadripper Pro. That was true for the 3000 series, and I'm pretty sure that's going to be true for the 5000 series as well. Why? Because there's so much 
performance there. These systems are so much better and there's never been a better value. The reality is that if you have a two or three year old system and you get one of these Threadripper Pro 3000 or now even 5000 systems, it's such breakthrough performance that your work time is gonna improve 50%, 60% and more. So in that regard, these are maybe fair prices. And AMD is not bashful at all about bragging about recent wins and work done with studios and case studies and all kinds of systems where they've injected Threadripper Pro workstations into various companies. And the companies say, wow, this is completely transformative for our workflow. So yeah, Ashton Martin, Pixar, Disney, more. It's, it's kind of a lot. And believe it or not, when you compare the performance of these two Threadripper Pro 5000, the 32 core systems to Intel's 32 core and 38 core offerings, their workstation CPUs that launched just at the beginning of 2022, uh, they actually cost less. What? Yeah, the 32 core CPU here costs $100 less than Intel's 32 core and the 32 core, uh, this is actually faster than the 38 core. Like that should, that's how bananas it is. And there's also a 64 core CPU available, so. With Threadripper Pro 5000 in the workstation, it really, it's not a fair fight even. I think though, this does mean the end of what has been called the high-end desktop. Threadripper is no longer high-end desktop. There is not a reason to buy these if you're an enthusiast. Buying a Threadripper 1950X or a 2950X wasn't really that much of a splurge, and those were monster CPUs for their day. They completely changed the game. And this CPU, well, it's still changing the game, I mean, two terabyte memory support and really just about the fastest thing that I've ever seen for really heavy multi-core workload. I mean, people are adopting Threadripper as their workstation CPU in business class machines over the last couple of years to the extent that there's supply issues. That's unusual that this would be good. And it's unusual that people will be excited about their computer. It's like, I'm excited by my toaster because my toaster is so much better than my old toaster. And AMD's capitalizing on that because if your new toaster is that much better than your old toaster, you're, you're that excited, there's something going on there. But that does mean there's a gap. And let me put it another way. So our 5950X, would you rather have that or a 2950X? The 2950X supports twice the memory capacity, more than twice the PCIe lanes, double the memory bandwidth, but the 5950X is head and shoulders dramatically way faster. They're both 16 cores. I'm gonna pick the 5950X every time. Yeah, it doesn't support as much memory, and yeah, it doesn't have a, as much PCIe connectivity. If it had more of those things, there would be no question whatsoever. So, I'm hoping that AM5, AM5 on something on that, fills this high-end enthusiast gap. Will we see something that bridges the gap between the $700-ish dollar 5950X and the $2,400 24-core Threadripper Pro? I sure hope so. Hopefully somebody at AMD's paying attention. Now I mentioned that these systems have broken some world records. <laughs> That's true. Let's uh, do a deeper dive on that. Out of the box, as configured, our Puget system scores about 48,000 on Cinebench R23. That's our baseline. That's a fire breathing monster score. Don't get me wrong. That's almost as fast as half as fast as the 64 core world record holder, which is over 100,000 for two sockets. The system I built around the Creator WRX80 is an upgrade to my old wood grain system, which is rocking a 3970X, that's non-pro. And this new system, same CPU, same 32 core CPU, scores about 54,000 in Cinebench. And that's without PBO enabled. Wait, PBO? You can PBO Threader for Pro? Yeah, I mentioned it's overclockable, weren't you paying attention? I don't think you should do it, but you can, at least on the Creator WRX80. Our Puget system is well built. I can't give them enough kudos, but it's very conservative. And it's also a little bit of a paradox. So this system is built around the Asus Sage WRX80, as I mentioned. It has 16 power phases. The VRM in this is super overbuilt. There's no, you know, there's nothing crazy going on, but there's no overclocking. There's no PBO. There's no anything like that on this motherboard. Our other system, also, the same CPU, the same Threadripper Pro 32 core 5000 series CPU is on this ASRock Creator WRX80. Now, I plan to review this motherboard separately, but I didn't quite get to that yet. It has more, well, let's just call it a more modest VRM implementation that includes a heatsink with dual fans. And yet, that's plenty of power 
Threadripper, Threadripper Pro 5000. This motherboard can actually burst to about 500 watts of power delivery and sustain 400 watts of power delivery to our CPU. And yes, it supports PBO. That's a little bit of a paradox, don't you think? 16 phases, not overclockable, a more modest VRM implementation, and yet much better scores. It's pretty interesting if you're after that kind of thing. Although overclocking, I don't know, head to head, the two systems, uh, it's about a 10% better overall multi-core performance gap. And that can't just be explained by, you know, the fact that the VRM is built a little differently. So I dug a little deeper. It's actually more interesting than that. On the ASUS system, our IO die uses more or less a constant amount of power around 100 watts. It never really enters a low power state. That's, that's, uh, seems to be starving our cores for power. Not really starving, but reducing the maximum theoretical performance. The ASRock Creator, on the other hand, will uh, throttle the I.O. die to reduce the power consumption in some circumstances, but really it seems to not count about 20 watts of power that the I.O. die uses, effectively giving that 20 watts to the cores. So it's sort of weird when you look at it, it looks like the core well, the overall CPU is using about 300 watts instead of 280. And this is without PBO on, and this is on BIOS version 5.11 on our ASRock Creator WRX80. That's why the multi-core performance is about 10% better. Those 20 watts go a long way. And it's technically not an overclock, I think, as the cores themselves aren't really getting more power or voltage than they're supposed to. It's just not counting some of the power that the I.O. die seems to be using. It's a really interesting situation. Seems like the overall power budget inside the CPU, ASRock's sort of doing something a little different than ASUS. I'm not really sure what to make of that, so I think I'm gonna do a separate video on that. I've got some more investigation to do, but it's pretty interesting. Now, in terms of single core performance, well, the single core performance between these two is basically identical. And as both my CPUs are 32 core, and, you know, it's four chiplets, 128 megs of L3 cache, it's not entirely unexpected. I could see 4.5 gigahertz boosting on up to four threads, 4.55 actually, with more than four cores loaded, you might see 4.5, but it was usually like 4.3. 4.3 gigahertz would continue for up to about 16 threads on the system. You know, it's a 32 core, 64 thread system. And as the system became fully loaded, you know, we were looking at about a 3.7 to 3.9 gigahertz all core clock, depending on what we were doing. But still, 4.3 gigahertz for eight to 16 threads loaded, that's pretty good. I also did a full Pharonix test suite on our Puget Systems configuration, this thing. And boy, was that impressive. In some tests, this was 40% faster than the Threadripper Pro 32 core from the 3000 series generation. I mean, the fact that the difference between Zen 2 and Zen 3 is basically down to L3 being one big 32 meg segment on Zen 3 versus two 16 meg segments on Zen 2. Yeah, 40% at some benchmarks. For other benchmarks, the 32 core was in, you know, it was close to a 64 core Threadripper Pro 3000 non-pro, the non-pro version of the CPU. So for single core and single, you know, like lightly threaded performance, yeah, the Pharonix test suite shows there's not really a lot of performance difference between these two systems. And it is a pretty good uplift over prior generation Threadripper and Threadripper Pro CPUs. Now, I couldn't help but compare it to the 32 core Epic CPUs as well, and yeah, it's actually faster than that, which is a little weird because Epic is actually double the L2 cache. Even though it's 32 cores, it's four cores per chiplet, so you get double the L3. Depends on what you're running, that could be really advantageous, but the higher clock speed of the Threadripper Pro sort of wins out most of the benchmarks, versus the lower clock speed but more cache and more chiplets that you get from Epic. Makes sense. I mean, Threadripper as an unstoppable workstation CPU with no real workstation competition, even at the new price points, yeah, Threadripper domination confirmed. Threadripper has been my, my daily driver for years, uh, and I really, I couldn't be happier. It's really pretty awesome. I'm actually upgrading from a non-Threadripper Pro to one of these systems. Well, not this system, this system from AMD, but you know, same configuration, and I'm really looking forward to that. Oh yeah, and two terabytes of memory capacity. Uh, I mean, what's not to love? Memory actually is a whole other conversation for Threadripper Pro, because Threadripper Pro supports desktop memory and unregistered error correcting memory, but also registered error correcting memory, load reduced DIMMs, and 3D stacked load reduced DIMMs, or 3D stacked 
error correcting dims. I'm gonna have to cover all that in a separate video because pretty much anything you put in here for memory will work, but I'm only gonna recommend registered error correcting memory, load reduced dims, or 3D stacked load reduced dims. The configuration that I tested on our Pharonix test suite, 512 gigabytes. Uh, also, well, I tested actually a couple of different memory configs, including 512 gigabytes of registered DDR4 3200, which is the fastest configuration. It's faster than load reduced DIMMs, it's faster than anything, but for a capacity beyond 512 gigabytes, you're gonna have to move into load reduced DIMMs. You know, you're gonna have to check out the memory video for that. 3200 is the fastest supported configuration of DDR4 on Threadripper Pro, and I do not recommend running 3600 non-air correcting memory. Look, $2,400, $2,499 for 24 cores. If you're an enthusiast, I think keep your money. There's some really interesting things on the horizon for enthusiasts. Now, will we see Threadripper Pro or Threadripper with a gigabyte of vCache next year sometime? I don't know, maybe. I think enthusiasts are better off hanging onto their money because I think there's some cooler options that are on the horizon that are gonna come out in pretty short order. These are for getting work done. These are no nonsense, let's just get it done. And they're worth every penny in that regard because you're gonna get your stuff done. It's a three to five year lifetime machine, but I don't think it's an enthusiast machine anymore, which is not you know necessarily a bad thing, it's just a coming of age story. My recommendation is to uh, not DIY it if $2,400 to $3,500 gives you pause for a CPU. Reach out to Puget, especially Lenovo or other system integrators, and let them know what you're doing and see if they think that Threadripper will absolutely thrash your workload rather than try to DIY it. I mean, you can DIY it if you're a wizard already uh, or if you know somebody that's a wizard that can help you. And yeah, if you do that, definitely show it off in the level one forums. I'd love to see it. I'd love to see what you're up to. I'd love to learn more about what it is that you do that you need such horsepower because I've learned some interesting things over the last couple of years. I'm Wendell, this is level one. I'm signing out. You can find me in the level one forums. I'm going to go compute on my new Threader Pro 32 core 3975 WX. Woo! Signing out, I'll see you in the forums.